Hello, my name is Nia Patton. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about the Ordinary's 100% ascorbic acid powder. I want to show you how to mix it up so that it's effective for your skin and a few pointers, uh, what to use it with, that sort of thing. Um, I did a video before about this and it wasn't very good to be honest, but I've had loads of views on it. So I wanted to redo it and make it better. So I feel qualified to talk to you about skincare because I'm one of the uh, moderators of the Ordinary chat room. I have a skincare blog, I have a skincare podcast, I eat, sleep and breathe skincare, I have a postgraduate diploma in cosmetic medicine. And uh, so we're going to get on to the subject today, which is um, how to make yourself a nice, fresh ascorbic acid serum at home. So first things first, you have your powder, it comes in a glass jar. So the first thing you want to do is check that it's fresh. So you want a blindingly white powder. You don't want it to have solidified or turned into chunks. It should be soft, fluffy and white. So if it's gone yellow, that means it's oxidized and it's gone off. The next thing you want to think about is what you're going to mix it with. So for ascorbic acid, it needs to be something with water in it. So vitamin C needs water to dissolve, to be in solution. It's only when it's in solution that it'll go into your skin. Vitamin C is really tricky because when it's made into a product with water, it'll go off really quickly, but it needs to be in water. So you want to always check your vitamin C products for yellowness, and that means that they're bad and you can't use them. So there's a few um, popular serums that have ascorbic acid and water, like um, SkinCeuticals, CE and Ferulic, and the similar product by Timeless. So um, they're going to be more likely to go off because they've got water in them. But vitamin C does need water to work. So it's only the pure ascorbic acid that needs the water. So ascorbic acid derivatives like magnesium ascorbyl phosphate and ascorbyl tetraisopalmitate, they don't need water. So they're a bit easier to um, store and formulate. Um, but for this, for, for pure vitamin C, you want it to be fresh. So that's why the Ordinary's Vitamin C Powder is such a great product because you make it fresh every time. So you don't want to make it in advance and leave it sitting around without a preservative in it because that it'll just go off and it just won't be effective. So uh, as you need to use it, then you mix it. Um, so you find something that's got water in it. So it could be maybe a thin watery serum. So uh, marine hyaluronics by The Ordinary, that, that would be suitable. Hyaluronic acid, um, you could get like a thin, and I've got this um, super drug hydrating serum. So it's moisturizing, but you know, that's got a lot of water in it. It's quite watery, anything like that. You can also um, add a, another antioxidant to it. So something like resveratrol or pycnogenol, that would work and that would help stabilize your vitamin C and make it work better. Um, you don't want to be mixing it with any of the Ordinary's peptides or EUK134, so those are both known as, as well as niacinamide, they don't mix well with the pure ascorbic acid. So, something watery and another antioxidant. I was just wanted to pick this up to show to you. Some of the Ordinary serums are coming you know, straight from Desiem. This is a new resveratrol and its, its cap is on a little bit wonky. A few people have said that their products have leaked in the box and this one didn't leak, but it kind of looks like it hasn't been screwed on properly. I think that's just something that's coming from the factory. So the other thing about um, pure vitamin C, as well as it needing to be in water and going off really easily, is that it needs to be at a low pH. So that's another tricky issue when you're formulating it and making it yourself at home. If it's in too high a pH, it won't work. It just won't absorb into your skin and that's why vitamin c can be quite irritating it can really give your skin redness and rashiness i particularly find that vitamin c is an acne trigger for me anyway um and if i use it i've got blackheads and spots so i i tend to avoid pure vitamin c these days and uh, maybe i'll dip my toe in at a later date when i'm feeling aged but uh, for now i'm, I'm giving it a wide berth because because it does mess with my acne. Okay, so for my ascorbic acid serum, um, you have a something like this. So I've got a little glass dish. So you take that, give it a wipe, make sure it's nice and clean, 
and then you get your powder. So I would say you want, say, half a scoop, that kind of amount, to do your whole face. Get out the spoon, you. There we go. So it looks a bit like, it looks a bit like drugs, which is quite fun. And then I've got my marine hyaluronics and I'm going to put, say, four or five drops into my little dish. And then I'm going to have my resveratrol and one, two, three. And then you take something plastic. In my other video, I use something metal and somebody pointed out that you shouldn't use metal with vitamin C because it's corrosive. You might end up with some metal oxides on your face, which is not ideal. So you mix it up with your plastic tool and then you could apply it with a brush or a sponge or just try and pour that out into your hand or you could make your um, serum on one of these silicone sponges. This has gone a bit yellow, which is weird. Um, and then you can apply it straight to your face using that. And that's quite a handy trick. I've got my pH meter. It's really, really handy, this. And it'll show me exactly what pH this um, solution is. So if you follow this recipe, you should end up with a nice low pH. And I think it's sort of leveling out at 3.3-ish, 3.3, 3.31. So that's less than 3.5, which is ideal for vitamin C. So as long as you use five drops of the liquidy serum, so marine hyaluronics, and then uh, half a scoop of the vitamin C powder and three drops of resveratrol and ferulic acid, and that should give you a nice low pH. There we are. So I've uh, done my serum, got it in my little thing here, got my silicone sponge. So I'm going to apply that to my face. That should be enough. Dotting it around. And ideally, you want it to sting a little bit because of that low pH. It should be a little bit stingy. It is stinging, in fact. It's going on nice and smoothly. You don't get that grittiness because um, the powder dissolves completely into the watery um, serum. You don't get the grittiness that you get with the, um, say, the uh, ordinary 23% in silicone, which is really unpleasant. It's very smooth. It just feels like a nice serum, but it stings. And that's, the, that's really what you need. You need it to sting because you know then it's at the low pH. So, um, you know, some people I've seen mixing the vitamin C with pure resveratrol without any watery serum. And uh, resveratrol by the ordinary doesn't have water in it, so that's not ideal. And um, you could mix it with something like uh, a moisturiser, like natural moisturising factors from the ordinary, or an oil. You could do that, but the vitamin C wouldn't dissolve because there's, no there's not enough water in them. Um, you know, watery moisturisers, yeah, maybe you can do that, but NMF, I don't think it's watery enough and you'll end up with a gritty feeling and the vitamin C won't dissolve in it and it won't absorb as well. You know, if you have it, have the vitamin C in an oil, you're not going to get a strong, fresh uh, vitamin C product that uh, will actually have that much effect on your skin, you know. Um, so ideally, it needs to be something watery. And uh, if you make it fresh and put it straight on your face, it won't go off and that would be fine. It'll work well. Thanks for listening and watching. And I hope that's been helpful. I'll, um, I'm in the uh, Skincare with Friends Facebook group, also on the Ordinary chat room on Facebook. And uh, any questions, uh, pop them in the comments. Uh, thanks for listening. Bye. <laughs>